evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting of the Ordinance Committee to order on Tuesday, March 28th at 6.30. My name is Linda Bacon and I'm the Chair of Ordinance. In Chambers tonight, we have Councilor Givner, Councilor Rivera. On Zoom and members of the committee, we have Councilor Maldonado Velez and Councilor Jordan, and I'm joining on Zoom also. Thank you. So tonight we have two public hearings and I'm wondering if the applicant for item one is in the chambers? Yes, they are. Okay, great. So I'd like to entertain a motion to take up item one and open the public hearing. Motion to take up item one and Second. open the public hearing. And oh, um, Councilor Maldonado Velez, could I ask you to make the motion so that we can do the roll call so that we don't have to do all every single regular order of business by roll call? Yep, I'm pulling it up right now. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, so I want to make a motion to take a roll call vote that for the purposes of this meeting will be applicable to all motions to suspend the rules, remove an item from the table. Oh, my screen just went blank. Motion to take a roll call vote that for the purposes Basically. of this meeting would be applicable to all motions to remove an item from the table, place items on the table, open a public hearing, package items, or suspend the rules unless there is an objection. Second. Okay. Okay, so roll call vote on this. Bacon, yes. Givner? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so now we can properly open the public hearing, take up item one and open the public hearing. So all in favor? Aye. 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 So item one is a public hearing for a special permit extension application of the high-end management LLC to operate a retail establishment and recreational marijuana cultivation facility at 110 Winter Street. Um, so what I would like to do is let the applicant give us their overview and explain to us their good cause for needing the extension. If you can give us your name and address, you have the floor. Okay. Is it on? Hello? Yes. Hello. Hi. Good evening, counselors. Um, my name is Helen Gomez Andrews. I'm here with Chris Andrews. We live at 202 Pine Street in Holyoke. And um, I thank you for the opportunity um, to request an extension of our special permit. As you know, our special permit was granted um, in the fall of 2019. Uh, several months, uh, just a few short months before the pandemic began, we were awarded our provisional licenses for cultivation, manufacturing, and retail at the height of the pandemic. And um, as can be exp as as so many others, um, like so many others, we um, lost a lot of momentum, lost all our capital that was lined up to fund the business. And it took us a long while to get back on our feet. As a cannabis business, we weren't entitled to any PPP, EIDL, or any government support. Um, and we've been working very hard um, to get the ball rolling again. Over the past year, um, we have picked up a ton of steam. We've worked a, a new uh, with our architect to bring our designs from conceptual closer to final documents. Uh, we met recently with the buildings department to make sure that our plans are, you know, uh, viable um, for permitting. Um, we actually uh, have um, and I'd rather not fully disclose at this time because the ink's not yet dry, but we've received a term sheet for funding. We got an appraisal done on the property um, a few weeks ago. The, the numbers came in on Friday. We don't have them yet, but we actually are making really good progress to get up and running 
uh, shovels in the ground in a few months, knock on wood. Um, I would also just like to add that in that time, we've continued our work supporting the community. Um, I have mentored with E4ALL for several seasons now. I'm on the board. I was recently asked to chair the board. Um, and we are really, really dedicated. My husband and I, my mother who moved here with me and our kids are really, really dedicated to the community and um, are really grateful uh, to be here. Um, and just grateful for the opportunity to, to get an extension to get our business up and running. Okay, well, thank you for that summary. And um, just to clarify, it sounds like you're indicating that you believe you would be able to be fully operational within a year? Yes, um, we are uh, on track you know, CCC final approval notwithstanding. And as we've known, as we've seen with other businesses here in Holyoke, um, submitting for final, per, uh, final, final license and actually being awarded the final license, we've seen some businesses here in Holyoke wait five or six months, even, mm -hmm. when, even after they've fully staffed. Um, mm -hmm. So that notwithstanding, yes, we are on track to be operational um, uh, by the end of the year. Okay, thank you. Are there any members of the committee that have questions for the applicant? My, not hearing, Council Rivera? Uh, my, my, mine is not a question. I just appreciate that we're holding residents and then you're holding residents applying for the, uh, the license. Well, not applying, you already had the, the application, just renewing the application and going through the process. Appreciate it and can't wait to you guys actually open your space up. Thank you, Councillor. Madam Chair? Yes, Councillor Givier. Um, I just wanted to ask, are you guys still going to be at 110 winter? Shift? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's good. So that, that worked yeah. out. And I also appreciate that you are residents and you've dug in your heels and these are the kind of applications we like to see. So um, I would 100% support an extension because you are residents and you're not one of these ginormos coming in trying to do things. You are part of the community. So thank you for all that you're doing here. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bacon? Yes, Councillor Jordan. Yeah, um, I also wanted to support uh, what uh, they're trying to do. I mean, here you have a situation where we had COVID, uh, you know, they come in, they get their approval in late 2019, and then, you know, sort of all hell breaks loose at that point. Um, that has got to be obviously very traumatic for a new business. And, uh, I, I really thank these new Holyokers for, for coming to our community. We're lucky to have you. We really appreciate how community involved you are and uh, that's what good community does. We support each other and uh, happy to vote for your extension and uh, uh, we wish you the best of luck with your, uh, with your new venture here. Good luck. I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, um, at this time, not seeing any, any other hands, I would like to ask if there's any members of the public either on Zoom or in the chambers that wish to speak in favor or in opposition to this extension of the special permit. Not hearing anything, not seeing anything. Um, I the motion to close the public hearing, Madam Chair. Second. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, I would like to also say congratulations on surviving COVID and <laughs> persevering. Um, and now our public hearing is closed. And so I'd like to entertain a motion relative to extending the special permit for one year with all conditions of the original special permit remaining in place. Motion to uh, motion. extend the, sorry. Motion to extend the special permit for a year with all uh, with all conditions in place. Second. And this will be a roll call. So all in favor, Council Rivera? Yes. Council Givner? Yes. Council Maldonado-Velez? Yes. Council Jordan? Yes. 
and Councillor Bacon, yes. So on a 5-0 vote, we will be recommending to the City Council to extend the special permit for one year with all the conditions the same as they were in the original special permit. Thank you very much for coming down and giving us an update and uh, we wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Um, I just wanted to let you know, Councillor Vacan, that um, Councillor McGivern has um, entered the chambers. Oh, well, thank you. Welcome to the Ordinance Committee meeting, Councillor McGivern. Great to be so here. So I would like to entertain a motion to take up item two and open the public hearing. Motion to take up item two and open the public hearing. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the so the public hearing is for a special permit extension application of Four Trees Holyoke LLC to operate a dispensary and cultivation establishment at 1 Cabot Street. Um, in this particular situation, there has been an ownership change. And so we welcome the applicant into the chambers to give us an update and give us their good cause reasons for the extension. If we could have your name and address, you have the floor. Hey. Abbott Street. There you go. All right. Okay, think, now we can hear you. Ah, hi. I'm Ed McNamara. I'm the... Uh, Director of Business Operations over at Milltown Agriculture at 1 Cabot Street. And uh, we've recently acquired uh, Four Trees um, Dispensary uh, Provisional License and their Cultivation Provisional License. Um, and thank you for taking the time to hear us. Um, basically, uh, Four Trees in Milltown um, merged, essentially, and uh, we purchased their licenses. Um, and uh, we're going actually, Milltown itself is going through an ownership change. So we need to extend the special permit for their dispensary. And then we need to do our own um, ownership change with the CCC. Um, so basically it's a lot of, it's a lot of paperwork, but we basically Milltown um, is taking over the project, the dispensary project from Four Trees. Okay. And you feel that you'll be able to accomplish this within what time frame are you thinking um we're hoping to uh open by the summer um okay uh so yeah we're kind of going full steam ahead at this point okay so i'd like to open up uh questions to any members of the committee relative to this ownership change and applicant I have a question, um, Madam Chair. Councilor Rivera. Um, I guess for me, it's what other than the ownership change, what it, what else is expected to change? Um, I imagine well, the name will probably change. So would so I I don't know. I'm new to the council, so I uh -huh. some of the um, some of my colleagues that are um, more um, seasoned might have might be able to clear it up for me. But it's, so if you change your name, wouldn't you have to apply again? And you can change, uh, apply for a change of name, change of ownership. It it, it amends the the uh, license. Okay, basically. I just, that's the only question I have with yeah. regards to like exchanging and all the other stuff. Yeah, but wouldn't you have to? No. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. All right. Yeah, you don't have to restart the whole license process. You just it's a yeah. It's, all right. Um. Councilor Rivera, I think if you wanted to, um, as part potentially of a future motion, it could be acknowledged that with the ownership change, it, a name change would be anticipated. Madam Chair? Councilor Gibner. Can, can you um, explain what you just said? Because I didn't understand that. Oh, so I was suggesting that potentially a note or a condition could be noted that with the change in ownership and the approval potentially of an extension that it's also anticipated that they would be making a name change 
so that it's something that we've considered as part of the extension. I, f I feel like we should include that in the extension anyways. Right. Just because th that way it's no issues later then on. Then it's done. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's done now and it's dealt with now. So it's right. just making sure that we include that there's going to be a name change or whatever. Because right now, I don't mm -hmm. know if you know the name, right? It's four, it, it's four trees. But, it's uh, the same name? No. no. Oh. It's going to be Milltown or Milltown owns it? Milltown owns it. We we we're, we're we're still con you know it's still in uh, process about about what we're going to call. Our, so our we, questions don't have anything to do with you really. We're just <laughs> confused about the process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think yeah, uh, what you what you mentioned, Councilor Vigor, like as an amendment just to what we're doing now, just to make sure that when they come later on um, to actually change their name, we already it's already dealt with pretty much. Yes. Yes, and it won't create another question. Yeah, great. I appreciate that. That's good. Okay. Um, so you, are there any other questions from committee members? Um, Madam I'm Chair, I have a question. Councilor Jourdain? Yeah, uh, how long of an extension are, is being sought here? Uh, at, at least, a, I mean, a, a year. We, we, we hope to be uh, up and running uh, by the... Okay, so when, when does this current permit that you were granted previously expire? Um, it was granted in 2020. Um, and, it, and you were required to complete it by when? Uh, it's, it doesn't necessarily say. Um, uh, so maybe I can help here a little bit. Um, just by way of background so the initial permits were given and then there was the question of the time frames and the notices around when they were expiring or needed to be extended by and nobody had taken ownership of that so between the planning department and our city clerk they sent out the notices to everybody to be sure that if they were interested in pursuing the extension, they could. And if they were no longer interested, they would be noticed that the special permit had expired. So there was a certain process that took place to make sure we all got on the same page in this regard, because it was the first time we were coming up on the deadlines, Councilor Jourdain. Okay, I'm, I guess I'm still not there yet. Um, I thought I was under the impression, wasn't it, they're good for two years? Yes, and we can do a one-year extension. Fair, fair enough, but are we beyond, do you have to ask for an extension before it expires? Or if it's already dead, you can then resurrect it post-mortem? with uh, an extension, like say, I, 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 I hear your question. Um, I would suggest that we suspend rules and let a member of our legal department answer that question. I don't know that answer. Okay. Motion to suspend uh, I'm, I'm the rules. A, yes, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules to if All right, I'll second that, that question. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor, we have Aye. to do a roll call. Vacant, yes. Jordan. Yes. Givner? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Thank you. So we've um, requested legal to weigh in on this question relative to the extension for one year. Um, looks like Attorney Bissonette's picking up the mic. You're muted, right? Oh, you're there. You are. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Chairman. Good evening, Hello. everybody. So with regard to the extension, uh, the city of Hoyoke is adopted by ordinance a two year special permit. Uh, state law allows it to go up to three, which allows the city to grant an extension of one year. Um, in reality, the uh, special permit uh, owner would have to show some forward progress in those first two years or it's an extension, or it would expire uh, on its own merit. Um, as I think 
Many of you have garnered uh, special permits are in perpetuity. Uh, so once granted, if you get the mission accomplished, you keep the special permit. However, while that's in process, the city maintains oversight. Uh, in this instance, I don't know if uh, the original four trees special permit had expired or not. I know there are a couple borderline ones. Uh, so the question would be, have they made progress uh, on their application, in this case, on their application with the license commission sufficient to warrant uh, an extension being granted? That would be the basis for the decision. Uh, in this case, uh, much as in the last case, there are a number of uh, mitigating circumstances, uh, primarily around the pandemic and, uh, and financing. So I think the city would be in, in good legal shape here to extend it. Um, however, a technical problem could be, as the Council of Jordan points out, if it had expired uh, before this application for an extension had been filed. Um, I know that was in the case of a few that uh, the city clerk had identified and sent the letters out to. I don't know if this is one of them. Um, I would, uh, when the Secretary of State has to uh, reinstate a corporation after it uh, had failed to file its annual reports, um, that may be uh, a similar situation analogous to this where, where that could be done by the extension and reinvigorate that special permit. I hope that uh, that covers that uh, territory, Council. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think that was really helpful. I uh, appreciate that, Mike. Um, so it really just becomes a question of had this expired or not. Um, assuming if it hasn't, I would be open to giving the person another an additional year to whatever that date was. We would have to ascertain what that quote unquote two years from the original granting date was, whatever that was, and then it would be another year on top of that, I guess. So do, do we know what the granting date was? In February 10th, 2020. Okay. Um, I, February I, I, of 2020, so we're already past three years then. Uh, I will note that we, I did have a meeting with Four Trees and um, Aaron Vega and the mayor, and we did talk about this. This is when we, we got the notice and we came up here, and this was the proposed action is to come to the ordinance meeting. And they did mention that, um, that yes, there was uh, confusion on uh, the actual time limit and, um, you know, older licenses being grandfathered. Hi, uh, my name is William Wong, uh, and I'm part of the operations uh, helping to build this business out as well. Uh, and just to add a little bit more clarity, it's my understanding that both Four Trees as well as Milltown Agriculture has submitted our annual report on time, uh, and that's prior to the February grant date. Uh, and also the, the um, asset transfer was made known to everyone involved uh, on once again on both annual report. Uh, I think overall it's just because of meeting schedules and paperwork that needed to be done uh, that, that may be taking us a uh, uh, you know, couple weeks over the, the deadline. Uh, but again, I think we have did our best effort to make sure that everyone involved along with the city understands uh, what the businesses are going through. Uh, and hopefully that gives you a little bit more clarity and background information. Thank you. Um. Well, this is not really a question of, uh, from my perspective, it's just one of process. I'm sure you both, you gentlemen, appreciate that. We have to make sure that whatever we do, we're following a uniform process for you and for everybody else that comes in here looking for these permits. So the question is one of, you know, are we doing the same for you as everybody else? If somebody in your situation would be required to refile an application because you didn't use the one that we gave you between February of 2020 and February of 2022, it would seem to me that you would have had a duty before that two years was up to file for a one-year extension in that you would have had up to three years to do it. Uh, it appears you did not do that. And now we're left beyond even the three years so are we in a, a situation where this one has expired and you're now in a situation where you have to now reapply? Um, 
I mean, it's not really a question of trying to give you a hard time. It's just trying to make sure that the next person that comes down the road has the same rules as you. And that's, I guess that's really facts, facts intensive. Uh, I, I guess I would have to lean on, I don't know, has attorney Vega and I strike that Aaron Vega or the law department maybe could put together a timeline and a recommendation to the, to the ordinance committee. So if we are going to give an extension, which would now be for what a fourth year, is that even permitted to, to give you an extension for a fourth year? I don't know. Uh, we're, we're, you know, I, I guess we would need that information to, to see if we're well situated to give you this extension. And, uh, so I, I really would lean heavily on the law department and, and Aaron Vega to let us know kind of what, you know, they, they take a look under the hood at this thing and, and let us know if that's something we can do. And if we can, then, then it's just a matter of, you know, granting. And I think people want to help you out. Maybe you can just reapply. I, I don't know, but I'll, maybe uh, Mike could help us again with that. Yes, and if I could, uh, this is just raising another question in my mind because it came to us that the company applying for the extension is for trees and it's appearing that it's really Milltown that is applying. So I think there's a little bit of confusion here as to when the ownership changed. Madam Chair. Councilor Givner. Um, I just I just wanted to I guess clarify or try to figure out um, how something like this works. I feel like this is the first time this is definitely the first time I've seen um, someone take over another special permit. Um, yes. But it seems a lot like a liquor license. So I'm just thinking if I have a liquor license and I sell it, if the liquor license expires, I can still reinstate it. I haven't missed anything, but I still have to reinstate that same license. So I'm wondering what the difference is here because I think. Sorry. Right. Yeah. And okay. that's why I'm asking the question around the ownership because if the two year special permit expired but then a new owner took it then they would be here seeking to continue the special permit and so my question at the moment is is it milltown really seeking the special permit not four trees if the applicant could clarify that yeah it's it it, it is milltown um Milltown and Four Trees merged, and Milltown um, had now uh, owns their licenses. Um, for a period of time, Noni uh, and Steve Goldman were with the company. Noni was CEO. Um, she uh, uh, took leave of the position um, about two months ago. Um, so that's where we're at. She's no longer in the in the business, basically. So. Um, and then when William Wong has come in, um, and so we're and we're continuing with the project. Okay, and the merger took place in 2022. Yes. So within the window of the original special permit, or after it? Uh, I believe so. I'm not exactly sure when the asset purchase was. Um, But I, I, it was it was in the last six months, Ma Madam Chair. Council Rivera. I mean, I don't. I kind of have to agree with Council Jordan if we're going to be kind of stretching it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So like, even if even if they did purchase it within the time, the application was applied for with a certain span of time whomever it was, it was their duty to come back to the council and at least say that they needed the extensions within that time process. Whether it happened or not, that's what we need to figure out first. And then from there, then we move on to whether or not, if we can grant another special permit, like Councilor Jordan said, then we, we work with, the, with, with them to do that. But for now, I think he has a point with regards to figuring out whether or not, what is the actual dates 
what is the actual time frame so that way once we figure that out we can move forward on trying to figure out how to work best with them with regards to that unless we're just going to vote it and give it to them anyways which I have no issue with but at the end of the day if we're going to be fair and be consistent with our process moving forward then we need to either do it now or we do it one day one or the other but that's just kind of like what I'm hearing with regards to what Councilor um, Jordan was putting out with what he was saying, but I don't want to speak for him so he could speak and actually clarify if I'm saying anything that's not close to what he's thinking either at the same time. Okay, thank you. And we still have Attorney Bissonette with us. Madam and Chair. I guess uh, I would just, and it is listed on the sheet that we have that the owner on the extension application was four trees but the name of the applicant was listed as milltown agriculture and the paperwork really just simply lists the ownership change and references that the special permit was granted february 10th 2020 we all have this on our uh, attachments um, so that timeline is clear before us. So I guess, um, Attorney Bissonette, can you add any clarification to us? Or are we, at, at, given the logistics of this, at a place where Milltown needs to apply for a new special permit for this use? Madam Chair, I also um, would like to speak Council afterwards. Oh. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out that um, the special permit extension was requested 221, so it sounds like it's close to when it would have expired. So it sounds like you probably noticed it, it was expiring and yes. requested it. So it, I know it's late March, but we know we all know how long it takes to get on the agenda at a meeting. Um, so I just want to point that out and not vilify um, anyone well, before us. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody's trying to vilify everyone, but the anyone. But the initial time frame was 2020 to 2022, and so um, that is what is creating the question. So, Attorney Bissonette, what would your advice in this regard be? Because the documentation that we have is all of the information that we had been provided. Yeah, I think the clock has run out uh on the first two years for sure mm -hmm. uh, so the question would be um was there sufficient information that uh an extension of one year would have been granted that gets you to 2023 when they filed for the extension which would be an additional year as council jordan pointed out and give you four years um you can cite uh the pandemic uh, you can cite the extensions granted uh, for statutes of limitations uh, under the governor's order. Uh, you could also cite on uh, the fact that their merger uh, would represent substantial compliance with moving the process forward um, if you were of a mind to grant the extension. Um, I would uh, also note two other things that are intertwined with this. Um, First of all, uh, Four Trees has a valid five-year uh, post-community agreement with the city of Polio, uh, that is uh, substantially now uh, owned by Milltown's Agriculture. Um, so they purchased all the assets uh, and all the liabilities, I understand. Uh, so that's one aspect of this that says they still have a contractual relationship with the city. Uh, and on that basis, a special permit was granted. In addition, on that basis, uh, their license application was accepted by the CCC. Uh, I'm not up enough on where they might be in the provisional or licensing status. I'm sure the applicant would know that, um, but that might be another consideration. Are they moving forward on that, which is really uh, the basis far more than any, uh, any building or financing for being able to move an application forward We've seen it recently where no one will uh, be able to get financing until they get that final license approval. So uh, they're kind of all intermeshed here. And uh, 
Um, there is a possibility that Milltown would have to reapply and start this process all over again. Uh, that's entirely in the province of the council to determine. Hi, uh, William here. Uh, if I may just add a couple more points of considerations here. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I want to say that, you know, we are uh, committed to to you know, abide by whatever regulations and do the right thing here, uh, and and as um, uh, the attorney, sorry, sorry, didn't see your name, uh, that, that you've mentioned that um, it has been a challenging environment for for a lot of small businesses uh, right now. We have a team of uh, I want to say about 14, 15 employees. Uh, over sixty percent are local residents, uh, and and we are um, we are going through the. Uh, change of ownership paperwork with uh, CCC right now. Substantial financial resource and uh, internal resource has been invested in uh, completing the transfer of ownerships uh, and the asset purchase agreements already in place uh, as of last year. It's just a tremendous amount of paperwork that we needed to do, and every every turn, uh, you know, we tried to do the right thing again, being uh, open with communications, being direct uh, with our annual report on both sides, uh, and you know, we're we're moving as quickly as we can. And if we are uh, end up, if, if the project does end up getting delayed, we're looking at potentially a 1.5 to 2 million dollar revenue hit, uh, and that does mean about four to seven people could lose their job or not get their jobs. Uh, and again, you know, we we have a great operating team right now. We have managed to turn the business around, and and you know, it's a challenging environment for a small business already. Uh, I think with with the amount of resource and support we now have with a new team, um, you know, it would be a huge hit if we were to pause the entire project again. Uh, not only will the dispensary be on hold, but it will then impact the rest of our business. Uh, and and this is a substantial impact for us because as a as a cultivator, dispensary have you know multiple purpose for us. Again, I understand that these are business concerns, not necessarily the council's concerns. But uh, our goal here is to you know uh, uh, hire locally and continue to grow the economic here. Uh, and again, I think that you know uh, we will continue to to spend best effort to do what is right. Right, um, but you know any any uh, kind of understanding around the challenges that we're dealing with is going to be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mm. Um, thank you, Attorney Bissonette, and um, thank you, Mr. Wong. Um, Madam Chair, um, what, Councilor McGivern has uh, his hand raised, uh, and I'll recognize it okay. in just a minute. Um, so I think the situation that we're in here that we have to clarify is whether we're functioning within our ordinances or whether we're going outside of the ordinance to the point that was made earlier that we need to be consistent and fair in the application of what we're doing. And I think there are limits to what we can do as a committee and a council. But um, Councilor McGivern, you wish to be recognized? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bacon and uh, members of the committee and to the law department. Um, I mean, this is, well, this whole business, I think, is, is uh, trending and new, uh, new, to, uh, new to us, um, maybe not new in the sense that we've been working on them for two or three years now, but this is the first time I think we've seen two things, is a extension request that was filed, uh, looks like in a timely fashion, by four trees by the new owner which is now we know is Milltown, and we're addressing that. So I, I don't see the issue with the extension being a problem. I, I, I agree with Councillor Givner as far as name changes and uh, license holders, managers changes. I, I, I compare that, and I realize a special permit is not a license, but to what the, uh, both the state and the license board does with licenses. I mean, we're going to be seeing this a lot. And, you know, it's the nature of the beast where people will apply and, and do things in uh, not always timely fashion. I think the most important thing is that this committee, the city council, did the upfront legwork of a proposed uh, business, which means that we vetted the location, we vetted the, uh, the operations, we vetted the plan. Uh, at the time, the, the people um, who were the uh, you know the both the uh, going to be the holder of the special permit 
but also the people that were going to be working at One Cabot Street, you know, came forward and we vetted all of that. So to me, I think it makes no sense to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, I think we just have to uh, reaffirm that this is still the business plan, reaffirm the location, reaffirm, you know, that the special permit can be extended and allow Milltown, who can, you know, is merged, and this is going to happen a lot. We see it in in many businesses, but I think in special permits, it causes a little bit of a, of a, a dilemma. But at the same time, I think the most important work was done two years ago, and, you know, I think we can easily catch up and uh, grant the extension. But that's my humble opinion because I, other than location and uh, knowing what's going on in the city, I think this special permit ordinance is overkill. Thank you, Councilor McGivern. Um, the only thing that I would note is that the initial permit was granted in 2020, not 2021. So we're already have exceeded three years rather than two. But uh, nonetheless, that's the timeline we're looking at. Councilor Jourdain. Uh, yes. Um, again, I mean, if there's anything here, <laughs> Within our reasonable discretion to help this person, these these business people out, I want to do it. Um, but I just hope it's documented in here all these different salient points about uh, why they're postured appropriately to be eligible for a fourth year of extension. That's my only point. All these things need to be documented because. Otherwise, what I'm concerned about is you had two years to apply for a one-year extension. You didn't do that. You then had a third year, which ran from 210.22 to 210.23. And if I was listening carefully, the, ex the extension request came in on February 21st. That's 11 days late. Uh, but, you know, dates matter. Uh, timelines matter, but on the other hand, um, you know, we want to help you, uh, and if as long as we're postured appropriately, I don't have a problem, you know, and we legally can give you a fourth year here uh, to give you some more time to, to get this figured out, but, you know, if there is going to be any substantial changes with the ownership, because if the ownership is different, is there anything to Councillor McGivern's point, is there anything material about the what will happen here changed? Uh, I don't know, but I mean, I'm willing to give you every benefit of the doubt here to make this work, but I don't want the next person that comes down, you know, six months from now that missed it and didn't play by all the rules and just says, well, give it to me because you gave it to Milltown, you know, I don't want to get into that situation. So I hope we just got our I's dotted and T's crossed and we're within our, you know, uh, grounds to do this. But if we can do it, I have no problem doing it because uh, mm. it sounds like you're working through your situation and you're trying to make this work and get on your feet and we want to help you out and we appreciate your investment in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Attorney Bissonette, if I could trouble you for one more question. Thank you. Um, not troubling me. Go right ahead. So, so based on a situation where they have a contract and the ownership changed and there was this logistical communication going on between planning and the clerk's office and the people that had been noticed uh, within the last few months, um, in the context of COVID and in the context of an ownership change um, to deal with the inability to survive in those unusual circumstances, would we be opening ourselves, or, or let me say it the other way, would we, if we document those particular unusual circumstances, be within a legal framework that we could support um, at, and differentiate this from some other applicant that came in late for an extension? I think um, that's a very good question. I think you can detail 
those elements of your decision uh, in the notes attached to the decision to extend. Um, I think all of those create a firm basis for the unique circumstances. Um, care would have to be given if, if these very unique circumstances were to pop up with, with another one of the special permittees who has not opened yet uh, and has sold the business. We may have to revisit this to make sure everybody's treated with equity and, and in the same manner. Um, I would also uh, note that uh, this is almost entirely city generated where the city realized that five years and uh, two years in some cases had gone by for HCAs and special permits and wanted to uh, begin clearing out the wheat from the chafe if it were. What right. we had initially looked at four trees, uh, not knowing uh, where they were headed until uh, until uh, Milltown uh, stepped into the picture. So I think we've got a better sense that this is gonna happen now, bring some jobs and revenue in, but um, if you had asked um, a while ago before Milltown stepped in, uh, we probably wouldn't be able to give you the same answer, Madam Chairman. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Could, um, could I ask a question to the law department? Councilor McGiver. Thank you, sorry. I, I love hybrid, Councilor Bacon. Um, Mike, this ordinance that we created, is it part of our zoning ordinance or does it stand alone? The special permit uh, is part of the zoning ordinance. Okay, so if it's part of our zoning ordinance, how do, you, how do we justify having it only for two years and an extension? Zoning, you know, is, is something that is about use, it's about a business, it's about making sure the business and the location within the zone has a special um, need, a special uh, interest, and we adopt a special permit to allow for use. I mean, it's, it's a special permit for zoning is different than special permits for other purposes. Right. It's, so, it's the 40A rule, again, uh, rearing its ugly head, and it's applied to cannabis in this particular instance right. under Hoyoke zoning. Um, so that that's um, sort of where the two year and one year extension rule comes from. It's a hybrid of three total. But I think that the, the element that, that, that we're trying to reach here is under even under the state construction, is the city justified in essentially saying, if not for these particular reasons, uh, four trees would be able would have been able to move forward and be in substantial compliance. But as a result, both their license and their forward progress has been stopped by pandemic financing, et cetera, et cetera. Lay those reasons out, and, and I think that gets us within the box of allowing this this particular special permit to be extended. Um, I would also say it might be prudent to to suggest. Uh, that Milltown get back in uh, with their name change if this were to go forward in a, uh, a very time conscious fashion so uh, the council can be apprised re uh, regularly of where this project's going. I, I appreciate the answer. Um, I don't think it fully answers my question because if, if let me phrase it a little bit different. If I was a, you know, a business, uh, entrepreneur who was looking to uh, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a building and open up a, a, a business, a, a good business, which can make that money back, I'm sure, um, but then be told I need a special permit from the city besides passing state regulations, and that special permit's only for good years, I'd, I'd look at Hoyoke and say, huh? Zoning is about use. It's not oh, two years I, of use. Mm. It's once you're there, you know, if you don't violate laws, you 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 know, you shouldn't be reapplying in two years. Uh, Councilor McGiver, you're absolutely right. I, I'm sorry if I misspoke. It's permanent. A special permit is permanent to that use once you have achieved 
applying conditions are right. true. Oh, uh, look, you're supposed to have a building in. You don't know. Uh, uh, and you have, haven't got. Uh, Attorney Vicenek, can you repeat yeah, that? You're breaking like, up. You're breaking up terribly. Um, and so that's that's where the the rubber meets the road, I think, on D. Attorney Bissonette, we're having great difficulty hearing Man, you, and now you've you, frozen. Bro. We lost you a while ago, bro. Madam Chair. Counselor Jourdain. I, I think the point that Attorney Bissonette was trying to make, and when he gets back on, I think the distinction here is, yes, once we once you're granted a permit and you actually use it, it's permanent. The yes. distinction here is when you're granted a permit and you don't actually use it or you haven't made substantial progress towards using it, right. then you're in this notion of you can't ask for a permit and let it sit on a shelf for 10 years and, Correct. Uh, and, and then say, oh, I'm, I'm pulling it off the shelf like a coupon uh, and I'm ready to use yeah. it now. It doesn't work that way. You, you actually Correct. have to go and do what you say you're going to do. So right. That, it's that's... Yeah, but right. once you do it, it's good for us. Thank you. Right. Right. And, can, can and we... I liken it to when we're doing the property transfers and we have the reverter clause if they don't do anything with the property. It's sort of similar to that. Can, can, we, check anyway. and, can we check and see how much money has been invested in the property? Well, the applicant is here and... May I ask? I, I, I apologize for inter interrupting, but hybrid just is tough when you're sitting here and you can't raise your hand. But if we could just well, ask the applicant how much money Four Trees and now Milltown has invested in you, One Cabot Street. You, you have the floor and the applicant could answer that question. Uh, since inception to date, uh, we spent about uh, just under $9 million and we just took on another 1.5 uh, to fund the rest of the build out. And, uh, and we are paying quite a bit uh, yeah. for, for that repayment on the um, new, new capital that we took on. So uh, again, you know, this, this, is, uh, this involves everyone in the business. It does impact uh, not only the new business that we're trying to launch, but the existing operation as well. Uh, we're looking at about um, just under two dozen uh, kind of jobs, locally speaking. Um, and to be noted again, um, about six months ago, I, we did meet with the mayor and Aaron, this, and this was the proposed plan to, to extend the permit in this, just as fast as we could do it. The progress has been made. We have stamp plans. Um, you know, there is, uh, it, it, it isn't like nothing was done. We got the permit. Now, it would just be cool for us to know that, too, so that way when we come here, we don't have to do all this piece. You know what I mean? Because we just heard this now. <laughs> Um, and additionally, Milltown has its, you know, we, we have a functioning cultivation facility in the building. So we, we have a uh, relationship with uh, One Holy Oak and Michael Moriarty. We have our own, you know, um, special permit that we executed as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we've covered this quite thoroughly. What I would like to seek now is if there are any members from the public, either in the chambers or on Zoom, who wish to speak either in favor or in opposition to this extension of the special permit. I'm not seeing any hands and I'm not hearing anyone who wishes to be recognized. Well, Madam Chair, I have one, just one more question. I don't know if it's strictly rhetorical or what. But... Sure thing, Councilor Jourdain, you have the floor. Um, if, if we grant a permit, and I think this might even apply to other special permits. I haven't researched this in a while, but if we grant a special permit to someone, is that automatically transferable to a new owner? So that's the other question is, is there a requirement here that, yes, we're granting an extension, but is it also part of this uh, motion if we are going this route, which I think we're trying to help these people if we can do it is that part of this is we're also approving the transfer from Four Trees to Milltown. It seems, seems to me like that should also be part of the motion too, that we're transferring the permit to this new entity as well. Yes, if that's and even that, part that, of the request. 
that that we're recognizing that they have merged that they are now one entity and that we anticipate a name change due to the merger right but I just want to make clear I believe that's what they're required to request out of us okay so to the applicant so to the applicant just to make sure that we are clear on that point do you wish to in the public record in the public hearing put that request forth to the committee just for clarification are we talking about a pending name change we're talking about the transfer of the special permit from four trees to Milltown as I understood the question I'm understanding that the merger causes that to happen well you have a situation where if I understand the legal footing here is there was an there was an asset purchase agreement of some form between four towns for strike that four trees in Milltown but they have to go to all their regulatory authorities they have a permit in the name of four trees yes they would have to come to us and ask us to transfer this permit to the new owner yeah and I'm saying it would seem that this would be the time to do it if you're seeking our approval because otherwise we're granting an extension to a permit that was granted to four trees so it seems that you need to do two things here you need to transfer the permit to the new owner name and ask for an extension just as a you know if that's not the case then fine but it seems that that would be in your best interest so to the applicant are you asking for what counselor Jourdain just described yes eventually that will that the plan was to get the extension and then file with the CCC and have our change of ownership cemented and then come come back to you and 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 do exactly that yeah I think the the parts that we were unsure about is is exactly as Ed just put it we weren't sure about the order of operations and we didn't even know that we can kind of do two at the same time but in actuality what is happening is that the purchase as a purchase agreement has already been signed executed we're going through the change of ownership with CCC as we speak right now financial commitments being made attorneys working on it and and one way or another Milltown is responsible responsible for you know submitting all the paperwork doing all the right things from this point on um, and we're responsible for launching the business and and the success in operating the business as well so I think um, the suggestion is brilliant if that is a possibility um, I think ultimately that's where we would end up so if we could right. do that today it would be uh, just one 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 more step in the right direction well I guess I would suggest that if your paperwork is complete enough that you can say the ownership has essentially changed, then we could consider that tonight. The the only question there, Madam Chair, would be is does it require it doesn't does it require CCC approval before we can approve it? And that would be the only question. If that's that's not required, then maybe we can help them out and do that as well. If it if that other approval needs to be done first then they'd have to come back uh, a second time but well, whatever whatever's helpful well i think we could do it and then if ccc stipulated they needed to come back again given the paperwork trail then they would have to come back to us with an amend a further amendment to their special permit okay in my as i'm understanding things that's how i see okay. it at the moment so um, yeah. So, um, do committee members feel comfortable that they have enough information uh, so that we can close the public hearing at this point, or are there any other remaining questions that people wish to pose? It looks like uh, there's no other question. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor, and this Aye. will be a roll call. Vacan, yes. Jordan, yes. Maldonado Velez, yes. Givner, yes. 
Givner, are you yes? Yes. And Rivera? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so by your vote, the public hearing is closed. So, so now I think, based on everything I've heard, we could make a recommendation to the full council that we extend the special permit given the, I would say, exceptional circumstances of the COVID pandemic, the funding challenges that resulted in an ownership change that is in process and that the special permit will be implemented under the new ownership. Attorney Bissonette, does that capture enough detail? I think that's very good. Um, I just took a moment to, to look up some CCC regulations um, with regard to Councilor Jordan's question. Um, and it appears that a change of name application is required to be considered and approved prior to effectuating the name change. So in this instance, um, I think the city has to wait until CCC approves the change of ownership, and then we can go ahead and change the special permit, the HCA, and any other uh, building permits needed. Okay, and, and so we would further state that we anticipate that they would be coming in with a name change once the ownership change is finalized. Yes, please. Okay, so if um, committee members agree with what I just said, we can take that as a motion if you'd like. Yep, I'll make a motion to extend them out till February 10th, 2024 with all the pre-existing conditions. Second. And and with all the special circumstances as explained. Right. Um, so, and we have a motion made and a second to recommend approval of the extension of the special permit. And so I'll do a roll call. Vacan, yes. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Givner? Yes. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you to the applicant. This was a more complicated extension than we've had in the past, but we're trying to work within our legal bounds to help people get their business going and keep them going um, where you've already invested in our community. And so we appreciate your efforts to keep it going and keep building it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Motion to take up item three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item three, ordered that the Hoyoke City Council review and amend section 5.4 of the zoning ordinance to allow for accessory dwelling units, ADUs, in the DR zone. In addition to amending section two definitions and any other sections that may apply to allow this use in the DR zone. Accessory dwelling unit is a smaller independent residential dwelling unit located on the same lot as a standalone, i.e. detached single family home. The public hearing was closed 12-3 and we have the legal form that everybody has had a chance to review. I hope uh, by tonight sure. it had come to us. We had asked for some changes and I'm assured by I believe it was attorney Degnan that did this, that our changes have been incorporated in the legal form that you have. So at this point, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions or clarifications relative to this final proposed legal form. Attorney Dagnan, um, I'm not seeing any questions, but maybe you could just run through the changes with us just because it's been a little while since we had taken it up. Uh, yes, good evening, Councilors. Um, are we on item number three? I thought I heard you read. The ADUs. 
Yes. Um, I did not work on that ordinance. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> oh, you're on the you're on the food truck one, the right? Food truck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I withdraw my question. <laughs> okay. Back to committee then. Um, I believe this is reflecting what we had requested in terms of the changes. Um, if others find it so, um, then I'd be willing to end. This is the second or third time we've looked at this. So are we looking for a motion to approve the amendment? Yes, unless people have um, further questions on it. The only thing. Um, Madam Chair, just one thing in reading it, just to be sure, because it, it's been a while, right? Yes, um, yes. So did, did we intentionally want, because it's, again, it's been a while, uh, that the primary dwelling, which is smaller in size to the primary dwelling. So if someone wanted to build something bigger, they cannot build it bigger than what the original house is on the lot. Right, because I guess, um, and I'm going just by general memory, because it's accessory to it. Okay. All right, and that's, I mean... Again, it's just because it's been a while. I just needed a refresher. Well, no, no. Well, it, it, yeah. it, it's a reasonable question. Um, and, I, and I get that these right here, this technically is intended for that little section um, for like what is in Ward 2, right? It's downtown. Uh, downtown. DR. Yeah, down, downtown. Right. Residential. So technically you wouldn't have the space to be able to build something bigger than your home anyway is more than likely, but. Right. Um, Madam Chair? Right. The part um, that I'm not seeing is I thought there was a special permit component to this. Madam Chair. Attorney Bissonette. Uh, that would appear uh, under the new 5.4.1B. Okay, thank you. I thought I had seen it, but I just couldn't put my eyes on it in, in the moment. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, I Certainly. think it has everything that we asked for. So if somebody's willing to make a motion to. Motion to adopt. Second. Okay. So all in favor, Vacan, yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Givner? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this will get recommended to city council at our next meeting. Thank you very much. So I guess attorney Bess Bissonette, I should be thanking you for this, not Kathleen. Sorry. Motion to take them item four. Jane did it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm three for three then. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Okay. Motion to take up item four. And there a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Okay. So item four. Oh, um, I received feedback that our city engineer needed a little bit more time on this one, Councilor Givner. Okay, that's and fine. So if you want to table it, if he's ready, I can try to put it on the next agenda so we don't end up waiting too long. No, I, I think that's fine. I mean, we need to know whether or not it's safe to do this. So uh, motion to okay. table item four. Okay. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take up item five. Wait, she has to do roll call. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that on a table, so. do we need a roll call if we suspect um, if we took that motion? Um, package or suspend the. Mm, you covered that in the original no, roll yeah. call motion. We're all sorry. I think we're covered. All right, perfect. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, is there a motion to take up item five? 
So moved. Yeah, second, yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item five, if the city council create an ordinance that creates school truck zones in the city with the goal of eliminating oh, the our favorite one. managing the locations and promoting various neighborhoods. Now I'm on to attorney day. <laughs> yeah. And we went around with this one, if folks remember, first we thought we might need a zone change, then that was no, and we decided we could handle it through ordinance, and it had a couple of modifications, and we think we've got it nailed down now, but you still have another chance for a bite at the Apple Committee. Um, and maybe, since it's been a little while, Attorney Degnan, if you could just run through it. Certainly, Shelley. Okay. Good evening, counselors. And uh, yes, as Councilor Vacan said, it has been a while. And the last time we talked about it, I mean, as you may recall, it started out as um, as just basically having an ordinance that where a license was issued um, and the taxes were paid and everything, they wouldn't have to come each time. And then it it, it you know got the discussion got greater. So I have addressed. Um, the things that requested, and I added some new considerations. Um, so if I may, I just wanted to, uh, one of the big issues that was discussed had to do um, with the 300 feet, it's in 22-186, um, that we wanted uh, these food trucks, they could operate, um, they had to be within 300, that no food truck shall operate within 300 feet from a sit-down restaurant. Now, I put down, as I looked at our ordinance, and I put the words sit down. As um, I'm sure you may recall, um, our ordinance with respect to restaurant descriptions had changed. We broke out sit down with drive through. Um, I put down sit down because we're talking about brick and mortar mm -hmm. restaurants, but I put that down thinking you might want to discuss that a little bit, but I did address it. And address the uh, special events because that was a question also. So um, you know that you could operate uh, therein if it were a special event that the city council um, had permitted. So that was one issue. One that I actually um, two that I put in. There's a on the next page. There's twenty two dash one eighty seven, which. Um, what I put in there, it's important that we, that the food trucks comply with the state sanitary code. And they have to apply for a mobile food um, permit, you know, from the Board of Health. And uh, so I had indicated that the food trucks have to comply with the state sanitary code and our noise ordinance um, mm -hmm. to the extent that people might be concerned about that. And the tricky thing with the um, state sanitary code and that comes to 288, the effective day of the license. We don't want people to come before the city council, get a license without having gone to the Board of Health where they look at the state sanitary code. So right. I put in language that says that, you know, the, it, the licenses granted by the city council, they're not gonna be effective until they get it with the, um, you know, make sure they get the permit from the Board of Health. I was concerned that you know folks might think, oh, I got the license, and so I don't have to do anything else. Um, okay. but so, I, I, let me jump in just for a second. So sure. on section two dash one eighty eight effective date, you're saying the license to operate the food truck shall not be effective until the board of health has issued a permit. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. So all right. There's I, just okay. I thought about doing it the other way around, thinking that, you know, maybe they have to come go to the Board of Health before they come to, to this group for, to see council for a license. But then you have the same type of situation. You know, a person might think, oh, I got this special, I got the permit from the Board of Health, so now I can go. So this seemed to me to do it this way to make the most sense because um, you issued a license. And um, as our ordinance says, license holder, you have to comply with the state sanitary code. So right. I, yeah, I thought that that covered everything. Okay. The one I just thing, want to make sure we have the word not in there. That's all. Well, I think the way I got it is licenses to operate a food truck shall, oh, you're right, shall not be effective. Okay. My, I, just, thank you. I just wanted to be sure I was understanding. Correct. Okay. No, nope, you, you absolutely do, and that's correct, and that's a quick, that's an easy, easy change. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. 
Yep, that's what I was going for. So thank you, Councillor Baker. Okay. Um, the one other thing that um, I that was talked about, and that has to do with public parking lots using, I mean, because we know the law says that food trucks can operate on a public way, provided mm -hmm. they don't disrupt traffic. Um, so we talked about that, but the public parking lot, I thought was an issue because, and it's more of a fact one actually than legal, because do, I mean, it's consideration, do we want food trucks, unless it's, unless it's a special event, you know, um, do we want food trucks operating in public parking areas because that might be taken away from people that are parking there. We you know, there might granted. be a factual, factual concern there. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's I, not if, listed in there for that reason. If I okay. may real quick, Madam Chair. Um, Councilor Rivera. Miss, 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 Mrs. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Um, Attorney Dagnan. Yeah, there we go. Um, That's okay. I think we've already <laughs> granted somebody a permit to, to, to be in the parking lot over there uh, on High Street. So, uh, I mean, that kind of speaks to where we are with regards to the parking space and depending on where we would, we would want to try to identify spaces. The, 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 I guess the question I have is the only thing I don't notice is like an actual location or a space identified of where someone can do that. It, but it looks like you kind of did that with saying as permitted by the city council. Um, mm -hmm. But that would mean that we would have to designate where these spaces are then. Yes or no? Well, perhaps on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I mean, there's some municipalities that have said you can operate except the central business district. I mean, some, some municipalities have made that distinction. But, um, you know, we had some conversation, but I don't think that the concerns we really had were the brick-and-mortar Restaurants, as I recall, that was that was a big issue. So you're right, uh, Council Rivera. It does give um, the councilor council some some leeway here, um, unless you really, I mean, this unless you really want to make a determination as to where you don't want food trucks to go. If there's an area of the city where you just don't want them to be, mm -hmm. but I, I don't recall that discussion there so, so no nah, um, it wasn't it, it wasn't that we don't because we don't want to prevent them from trying to be in certain places at least not i not me but i think the intention with the order and, and councillor maldonado velez and councillor jordan can speak for themselves too as well but i kind of was going to file the order too but i fell back because they, i heard they were doing it already and, and it's more about like trying to identify a space and, and even if it's a time of year that it happens so if, if it's only in the summertime from june to july that we shut down lyman street on a certain section and then we allow for food trucks to pull up and sell whatever they're going to sell throughout that time is that's something that we can do and identify that or because I remember we had a conversation with zoning. I went with the planning board, and it kind of got to the decision of we don't want it to be in the planning board's hands. We're gonna tr we're gonna try to take a different route. So like, the idea is like, yes, we can as a council identify certain places and times probably, but like we're not the ones organizing these these larger events, right? It's the people organizing them, and the way we would be able to actually help them out is be able to to give them the the autonomy to be able to organize this in a space where we've already designated that this can happen. You know what I'm saying? Like but un, but unless we have to go by the fact that from June to July these spaces are places that you can actually park your truck and do this and do that, which is cool too, but it's just I trying to find uh, I guess a common ground on there or um are you asking? I mean, I think that this ordinance is drafted broadly enough to give the city council some flexibility yep. um, in terms of the hours, the time of year, um, where, uh, so long as you know. So, long so as that's the approach. Uh, no, thank you. So th I guess that's what I'm asking. So it's it's not necessarily written in stone what places or what time is it designated. We can designate that as a council. But we'd have to, I guess, go through the process of filing an order to do that and create it as policy. I don't. So that's the piece that I'm well, trying to understand. Well, you would have people coming to you for a license, as I understand it. I mean, there's two parts here. There's a special permit. I mean, sorry, the permit from the Board of Health. And then there's this license piece. 
And, um, you know, I think when they come to you, they're going to indicate, I would think, where they want to operate their food truck. And then it would be up to this body to determine, using the ordinance, obviously, which, is, I mean, which has got some leeway, um, whether or not to grant the license. So you probably do it on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, there might be issues of, hey, is there a special event here? Because you as a council, right. I think, w would know about them. So um, I think, and unless we're going to be specific about where we want it, I think, uh, Council Rivera, this, this, this uh, ordinance no, no, gets you, you, we you Yeah, yeah, the ordinance we have now, if we're not going to be specific, is fine. It's great. Uh, but if we, if we want to be more specific, then we got to be a little more clear and more specific. And I think that that's the question for me. I thought the intent was to be a little more specific. Um, but if, if not, I'm totally cool with it too. It's, yeah, I'm cool with so, it. So if I can just follow up on Councilor Rivera's question, but just from a little different angle, the way this ordinance is written, could we theoretically within this language as a city council say, for the months of June, July, and August, we would like to designate X street to X street as an area where anybody holding a proper approval from the Board of Health can go there with their food truck without having to come in for a specific location because the city council has decided this would be a really good place for a bunch of food trucks to be. Within this ordinance language, can we do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. we didn't have that that specificity before, other than the um, distance from from a brick and mortar restaurant. Yeah. But if this body would like to say you can have a food truck in this area and this time of year, and even for hours of operation, you could do that. Yes, but, you could make that change. But can we do it? without having to make it only that and always that. I mean, within this language, could we decide from time to time, we would like it to be here or we would like it to be there from this date to that date? Is, is there enough flexibility in here to do that? Um, I'm trying to figure, uh, because the breadth of the, the ordinance is being pretty broad. Are you saying you want to amend Councilor Bacon, the ordinance that we have here to to indicate that, you know, on a case by case basis, um, the city council um, may allow food trucks to go um, in certain areas of the city. I mean, it's basically all what this body determines. So um, I can amend the ordinance to get you in that direction if that's what this body wants to do, you know? All right, well, um, I'm going to defer to counselors um, Jose Maldonado Velez and I believe it was maybe Councilor Jordan that were the makers of this order because um, that was the sense I had of part of the intent so that people didn't have to come in. I want to be on High Street. We would say, hey, if all you guys want to go down to Race Street from here to there for this month, boom, you can go as long as you're blessed by the Board of Health and you got all your paperwork in order. But I'll, I'll defer to the members of the committee and um, Councilor Maldonado Velez, your hands up. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, and I think you're right. I, I, I think I think we've had a we've had a couple different conversations with this order, um, and I think one of them, you know, both even Conservator are right in that it's the hope is to create as it originally was a zone uh, but then we decided it's not going to be a zone to like create an area or a street or whatever it is that says hey if you have all the permits you have everything you need it's much easier to access this space um mm -hmm. and we sort of advertise it that way as a city this is a food truck area not to say that they can't be anywhere else but this is just sort of like uh, the walkable area that we want to bring people tourists or you know people of our city um and so I don't necessarily see that here unless, you know, Attorney Dagnan um, says that we can do it um, with the current language. I will say, like, some of the things on here. Um, one, thank you for providing this. I think when part of why I wanted to have some sort of ordinance with food trucks is because when we, you look at our ordinances, food trucks was not mentioned. And food trucks is, you know, a viable business, something that's popping up. All we have the closest to it we have is the 
the peddler and hawker section, um, which if you don't know that language, you're probably don't even thinking of like looking at that right. section. So really what we're hoping to do is create this to make it much easier for people that want to do food trucks. Hey, this is what we need to do. Um, so I appreciate for this, for sort of this foundation, but I do think like it, it could use some more tweaks here just based on like what we just said around like is it possible for us to assassinate it doesn't have to just be the city council i know one of the things i mentioned at one point um the office of planning economic development since they're doing so much tourism and marketing and whatnot like whatever body would decide that designates once a year hey this is the area sorry my phone is you know um this is the area where we have the food trucks this summer this year um that's really what we wanted to do um so I guess just going one, thank you for clarifying the section 22188 because I kept reading it and I'm like, lessons to operate a food truck shall be effective onto the whole board of health. And so glad we know that there has to be a knot in there because that makes more sense. Um, I would love to see in this ordinance, since, since Pellers and Hawkers um, section does have section around like the fees that we have to pay um some sort of reference to that section because that's the section that we still um follow around like what the fees are to set up a food truck um i know we mentioned the 300 fee and we don't have to have the amendment now i'm just thinking now like 300 fee may be a little too restrictive especially since council drain and orders around like eliminating um food um deserts so we don't want food trucks right in front of a brick and mortar store but 300 feet i believe is probably like two, almost two one city two city blocks so that really limits a lot of space in downtown i mean some of the food trucks that we've said yes to would have already been um said no to just because of this so i'm wondering if there's a lower number that you know makes it accessible but also doesn't have a food truck setting up right in front of a brick and mortar um the other thing i wanted to say around this section 22 187 um i think that yeah so i think that's where there could be a reference to the peddler's hawker section so that people know that there's a fee associated with it um there are what is it the special events so when i think of the special events i think of like the we mentioned the saint patrick's day parade i don't we don't necessarily as a city council approve the special event, the St. Patrick's Day, and I don't um, ever think that's what should happen. I just want a clear um, process as to like, if you are putting on a special event, is it each individual food truck that needs to come in front of us to get those special permits, or can the event organizers be the ones to be like, hey, these are the food trucks we're gonna have, you know, and, and just to have the one point of contact versus multiple point of contacts for this one event. Um, so that's where I'm at with all the things that I see in front of me. Um, I, I think it's a, a great step because like I said, we, we don't have a food trust section in our ordinances and it's very clear that we need something. Um, but I do think there should just be a little bit more work um, to get it more perfect. Um, so Councilor Maldonado Velez, would you propose then 300 be amended to say 150? 150. I was thinking I have 100 written down on in okay. front of me, but whichever. Okay. Let me say. No. How about, how about the 150? Because that one's a little low. That's okay. Pause it. Okay. So, so amend uh, 300 feet to 150. Is there a second on that? Second. So. All in favor? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Givner? Yes. Yes. Rivera? Yes. Okay, so we've amended the 300 feet to 150. Um, so, Attorney Dagnan, to get to what Councilor Maldonado Velez is talking about, would it be possible to put language in here that would say, time to time a special event or and or the city council may designate um areas for food trucks in terms of location and dates and times um yes yes i think that that's possible i was just listening to councilor maldonado velez and one thing that i i think is just um it's interesting and in that 
I mean, if we're going to determine, have a food truck area, then we should determine what that food truck area is going to be. If that's not the goal, if it's just to have an ordinance regulating our food trucks, um, and, and I understand what uh, uh, Councillor Maldonado Velez, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, I, I just think we have to make a decision. If we want to regulate the area, then we put in the ordinance where our food truck areas are going to be. If we're not, and we're putting in some of the broad general language, um, if that if you feel good about that, if that works for you, I can put in there that the council, um, you know, because you're, I thought you'd be looking at these licenses on a case by case basis. That's what I had envisioned. So you would have the opportunity at that point in time to say, well, look at, you know, you're putting it there and we have issues with you putting it there. But to answer your question, uh, Councilor Bacon, yes, we can put in some general language uh, like what you had just indicated. Um, if that makes his body feel more comfortable about what we're trying to accomplish. And, and I also wanted to note that we did do an exception, you know, because the food desserts, you know, accepting that. I think I put in there uh, ice cream because we're not regulating ice cream trucks through this ordinance. I wanted to be clear about that, but um, that was yeah. my answer. So, Madam so Chair. to try to clarify, I think we're trying to do both things. We're trying to let people come in and get individually licensed. And then we're also trying from time to time. I think the thing we don't know is maybe one year the area we would want food trucks would be one place and another year it would be a different place. So that we weren't trying to say food trucks will always and forever have to go over there. If I capturing our discussion correctly, but we wanted to be able to say to folks, if you have your approval from the Board of Health, and we set up this area that you can go, then you don't have to come and ask us. Madam Chair. Councilor Gibner. I just wanted to, I'm getting a little lost in this. I just wanted to clarify that our intention originally was to create actual areas that then could be chosen in like a circulation perhaps of where we could have food truck zones. And then on yeah. top of that, I mean, I appreciate what's been done here because this basically says what we can and cannot do as food trucks. So I feel like this is great as its own separate thing almost. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of this, I thought, was to designate areas where if you want to have a food truck license, you can just go there without. Yeah. So how do we identify these areas? Like, well, we need to talk to um, OPED or... Because I feel like I don't know where the food truck area should be, and I don't know what the city's doing as a plan full time. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Councilor Jourdain. Um, I would like, and I like where Kathy went with this ordinance. Um, I do agree with Jose's point, though, which is we should, and I think your point too, I think everybody's point, was that we have the flexibility built into this that we could create these, what I'm going to call seasonal periods. Uh, for example, where we designate areas that yeah. are beyond just the individual licenses. Right. But um, I, I think what we're trying to achieve here is to actually create a food truck ordinance and then have the process to it, too, on these designations. So I think you really need both, right? So you have to say what food trucks are, what they're, you know, all of that and then have the second piece which is what's the process to get one of these on public property and uh i like sort of the dual and we're leaving it open so that to answer counselor i hopefully uh, counselor givner's concern which is that we're leaving it open and this ordinance doesn't need to settle all the nuances of of what criteria we use to grant these it just says you have the authority to create uh, these with using our discretion, uh, you know, locations, time periods, all of this sort of uh, parameters. Uh, and then we could set those conditions at a future date under the authority given to us in this ordinance, right? Hmm. So it's at that time we would take a vote. We just need the, the launching point, if you will, that says, you have counseled the authority to do this with these parameters and 
and then we would then uh, have the authority to then take a vote of the council that says we designate X and X Street on certain months during these certain times, and then you know somebody could move forward with those type of a request. So um, we don't have to spell those all out because those are flexible. Those will change over time. Um, uh, we we might want to just make them very one year and durational. Uh, we don't need to spell out, I don't think, all of that nuance. We can sort of take those up as we think this through. Uh, I mean, if we decide to create permanent ones in the future, uh, maybe, you know, I suppose theoretically you could add those to the ordinance, but I don't think you need to do that at this time, just having the, the ability to do it. So uh, th those were my thoughts. Thank you. Thank oh, you. My, my so turn. can I... Can I throw out a sentence to see if it captures the spirit of the comment so far? So if we had a sentence or two in this ordinance that said, from time to time, the city council will designate food truck areas for a limited period of time not to exceed one year. So they would be a temporary thing that could be changed. Is that capturing what people are saying? Ma Ma Madam Chair, I, it's me, Councilor Rivera. Councilor Rivera. Rivera. Yeah, so I, I, I have to say that, that like the, the way it's written already, it kind of already does that. In my opinion, it's just my opinion, the way I read it. And that's why I asked Kathy the question. Because okay. there's, there's a difference in between us having the ability to, to, to say where and when, right? And us designating an actual space. Those are two different topics. So what Councilor Jordan kind of said kind of makes sense, right? Where it's like, we have one step and then we have another step. It's good that Kathy put this in front of us because this is something that obviously we didn't, we haven't had, right? Um, this is a piece, the first piece into getting and designating these areas. But later on, like Councilor uh, Givener mentioned, um, we don't, we like I have ideas where I would like it to be, but I am not the one that runs the Office of Economic Planning, right? <laughs> Development and planning. It would be better for us to have conversations with some of these people and to try to understand where it is that they would like to identify somewhere that would be permanent, and then we can do that. But this lays the foundation for us to do that. And my questions in the beginning was just to clarify that, just to see what so the you difference don't think is. We need. I don't, don't feel like we do, but if other counselors want okay. to, no, you know what I mean? I would be in agreement, but like the way it reads now, it, it kind of already does all that. I, I think for us is to try to figure out and working with the Office of Planning and Economic, Economic Development, OPED, right? Um, to try to designate areas in the future, like Councilor Jordan and Councilor Maldonado Vanez had mentioned, because that, that for us, that would help what we're trying to do with regards to attracting more people doing the tourist uh, uh, vibe thing that we're doing out here in Holyoke but it's not I mean I think the intentions for us were to try to identify that but now we're learning that we just set the right wheels in motion to start the process and I kudos to Kathy and kudos to all the people filed the order because it's actually working out in a way that is going to flow good for us, at least in my opinion. But if anybody else has anything else, I, I'm welcome to listen. Okay. Um, Councilor maldonado Bliss, did you want to be recognized? Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. No, I just wanted to just reiterate, thank you for for providing this language. It's, it's as many of us mentioned, this is a first step towards what we want to get to. Um, I think for me was since last year, two years ago, trying to plan events, tr trying to connect with other people to planning events, there's just no clarity around like what, like even what food trucks mean within the, our law, within our city. So even just starting to have this section that clearly is defined as a food truck section and goes into deeper stuff, I'm sure we're gonna add more into the future, but um, so I just wanted to make that point. Um, okay, well, I, if the committee is good with the language as it is, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to explore to make sure, you know, all the varying concepts were addressed to committee's wishes. So right now we have the legal form from attorney Dagnan and thank you for that. And at this moment, we've accepted it as written with one amendment changing 300 feet to 150 feet
and adding in the not where it was intended to be under section 2-188. So if if the committee is good with this language, I'll happily entertain a motion on it. So motion to um, approve this language um, with the amendments of changing the one fifth the 300 feet to 150 in section 22-186 and making sure we add the word not after shall on section 2-188. Well, would it be section 22-188? Just making sure that we have that legal form. Oh, 22. Yeah. Second. Oh. Second. Thank you, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, all in favor, vacant yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Dordain? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Givner? Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think we did a lot of work on this, and um, let's see how it works, and then we can always revisit down the road, right? Yes, thank you very much, counselors. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Motion to take up item six. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item six, ordered that we create a food economy coalition attached, which we all have the language on, request that it's taken up at a meeting ASAP as the order is attached to potential grant funding. Now, I just very recently received an update from our legal department that the mayor has the authority to establish this and that we do not need to create an ordinance on it as the language of the grant is read uh, again. So we've been kind of bouncing around with it for a while, but I guess I'll let Attorney Bissonette weigh in to um, further review this with the committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, the Food Economy Coalition is uh, similar to the tourism group that was created. Um, basically, it's an advisory committee under the Mass Motion, Mass In Motion Grant. Um, and so the purpose of it is really to supplement uh, the city's understanding of what needs to be done from the various component groups throughout the community. Um, the bylaws are already in place. The mayor is executing the uh, order to create the coalition to satisfy the conditions of the grant, and then uh, they will work with OPED to go forward uh, in a similar fashion as tourism, which which has just started meeting uh, in connection with the 150th. Um, this is uh, really going to be a positive step, I think, but it, uh, it does not require an ordinance to uh, be put in require uh, any ordinance to be taken out. Um, should this grant no longer be funded. So okay. for that purpose uh, and for the fact that uh, this is not going to be a body that receives the grant, OPEC is administering it, uh, there's no need to create an ordinance. So uh, that's where we are in this one. Uh, and oh, the grant is already submitted, finalized, um, so we're in good shape there. There was some confusion about what was needed. Uh, but the grant went ahead uh, on the condition that the city would create this coalition. So uh, we're in good shape there. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Maldonado Velez, did you want to add anything or yeah. what do you think? Yeah, thank, <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you, Attorney Bissonnet, for that update. Um, if it doesn't have to go to the ordinance, um, then that's fine, whatever it is, to make sure that we do what we got to do and get our grant money in do the things right. Um, you did <laughs> reference the Tourism Advisory Committee, though, and I know that was by ordinance. Um, we did put, you know, it, it wasn't like the whole bylaws, but it was, I, I believe in our last conversation around this topic was um, not necessarily putting all those bylaws that we have there, but just saying, hey, this is a scope and purpose, similar to what we did with TAC, um, and these are the members that will represent that. Um, so I just, I'm using that because we just did reference the Tourism Advisory Committee, so, and we did put that in order. So I just want to make sure if we don't have to do that, then that's fine. We'll go with um, what needs to be done, but that was put in order. So I just want to make sure we are doing it right. 
just, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, um, to yes, clarify that, that you certainly could create an ordinance, Counselor. Um, there's no prohibition against that, but the the, uh, the request was for the purposes of the grant. So in working with uh, with OPED staff, we determined it wasn't necessary. There's no reason it can't, but uh, we just didn't want to um, have that sense of urgency uh, to go forward and just push an ordinance through without knowing if it was needed. But any time, um, for example, if the grant were to stop and the, the council wanted to create some other funding mechanism and have it by ordinance, um, that could easily be done. We'd already have, uh, we'll already have the bylaws in place. Thank you. I, I just, I think back to, um, what is it, the parking advisory committee that I'm also a member of, and you know, it doesn't, just because it's by ordinance doesn't mean that it has to be an active committee, but just knowing that that committee exists and it's something that we can reactivate at any moment, um, I think there's power to that. So, you know, I'll go with whatever the committee decides, whether we want to put in an ordinance or not. I, I think the intention of the order is, as it's laid out with the, making sure that we get a grant funding and making sure that OPED gets um, what they need to get done. Um, but I do, you know, want to tell the committee there is power to having a committee in, in ordinance, whether it's active or not, but at least, you know, future consciousness can look back. And I know there's been multiple times in our tenure here this past year that we've looked back and be like, oh, this is actually by ordinance. Can we activate this part? Um, if we don't feel like we need to put this into our ordinance, that's fine. Um, but that's just my, my, my two cents in this matter. I just want to make sure we get our grant funding. Um, is there anybody else on the committee that wants to speak on this? I'm not seeing anybody or hearing anybody. Um, so, Councilor Maldonado Velez, this is your order. So, I mean, we could table it and ask for language for ordinance, or we could call it complied with because the grant has been submitted and we're good to go. But we would tend to defer to you as the maker of the order, which way you want to go. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Givner. Um, I was just wondering if we would want to receive an adopt and send this to the mayor, if the mayor would be the one who can just officially say it's happening, because it sounds like it's moving forward regardless. It does. Um, we could just... Um, we could call it complied with and just request that the mayor let us know the standing of the group. It, I mean, it's really, at least as I'm hearing Attorney Bissonette describe it in the purview of the mayor already. So I, but we can receive it and send it over to him or we can call it complied with and sent it over, I guess. I, I don't know what we would be asking him to do, though. I don't know, Constable. I can, I would say, like, if we can comply with with an order to the Mayor Garcia to keep us updated as to, like, where it is in the process for this coalition. Okay. All right. So, if that's your motion, that it's complied with and request the Mayor to update us on the grant or or um oped right if that's where it's getting sent in from um right. that we be updated on the progress of the grant um is there a second for that motion second so all in favor vacant yes jordan councillor maldonado velez Yes. Rivera? Yes. Givner? Yes. Okay, so that motion passes that this is complied and we request to the mayor and OPED an update on the grant progress. And um, we can ask Jeffrey to coordinate that for us, okay? All right, so on to item seven. Take item seven off the Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item seven, that an ordinance be created that requires that when notices need to be sent to a butters for public notices involving lots without buildings, that the address closest to the subject property be listed as a reference point 
plus a plot plan lot lines of the subject property be included so a butters can determine the exact location of the subject property they are being notified about now we have a legal form that was sent to us but it just includes the parcel number and I, I think Madam Chair, when you're when you're ready uh, hang on I'm just getting the um, language in front of me okay we're good to go Councilor Jourdain if you would like to weigh in yes I would like to put a sentence added to the legal form uh, to help fix what the actual problem is uh, and just for everybody's refreshing everybody's memory what the problem is is that when we're doing notices of parcels that don't have street addresses uh, citizens are getting crazy notices that say you're hereby notified that uh, we're doing XYZ on parcel blah 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 and they have no idea what we're talking about so that you're not receiving effective notice and when you have a small street not a problem people could probably figure it out but when you get like the recent example which was the um, up on Pleasant Street White Hut exactly thank you uh, that people were like what the heck are you talking about I had no idea on Pleasant Street where this notice was so they didn't even know what we were talking about uh, so then we re we had to go about spending the time and the cost to re-notice. So uh, one of the takeaways from that was they did not have a mechanism to use a different address when a parcel has no address. So we wanted to do this housekeeping here. And um, I see the uh, proposal here in front of us. Uh, so what I would like to do is add a sentence at the end of the uh, what's in parentheses, and it's it's as follows. If I may read it into the record here, I just okay. have to minimize my full screen here a little bit. And it says the following: It says where a parcel that is the subject of a notice has no street address then the street address of the closest abutting parcel shall be used as a reference point for all notices. And I'll read that again. Where a parcel that is the subject of a notice has no street address, then the street address of the closest abutting parcel shall be used as a reference point for all notices. So, hang on, I'm just writing. I did email it to you, Madam Chair. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so then in this instance, as an example, if it would say parcel 12345 located next to 292 Pleasant Street. Correct. That's the notice, how it would translate? The notice would say the parcel adjacent to 292 Blah Blah Street that you just, Okay. That would be, so now people could say, oh, okay, there's 292 whatever street, and they could go there. Okay. And find it. Okay. And I think that's kind of what the original order said, right? That yeah. was the intent, yeah. So we're just taking okay. the intent now and putting it into legal language. And if okay. the law department doesn't object to that language, uh, they could, I recommend they run with that. Right. So, um, Attorney Bissonette, I know, I don't believe you wrote this, but um, if the committee votes out this amendment, can it just get in final form for the next city council meeting? Because it's a minor change. We can definitely have that okay. for Tuesday. Okay. Okay, great. I think that's a worthwhile change. Okay. So, um, Councilor Jourdain, are you making that sentence addition in the form of, an, of a motion to amend the legal form? Indeed I am, yes. 
Okay. Is there a second on amending I'll the legal? Up. Second. Thank second. you. So all in favor, vacant yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Givner? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Okay, so this legal form has been amended to add the sentence that Councilor Jordan read into the record twice. And um, it's been indicated to us that we'll be able to have final legal form in time to act on it at our next city council meeting. So thank you all on that. And now we are on to item eight. Motion to take up item eight. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item eight, that one out of the two handicapped parking signs at 588 <laughs> South Summer Street, as well as the third sign on the Morgan side, please be removed. Only one spot was requested by constituents. Three were installed and school parking is on the city owned lot. Additionally requested that a no parking sign at the same address, please be removed. So at the request of the maker, because Councillor Puello did go out with our city engineer to the area and he's going to be refiling an order with more specificity to get exactly what needs to happen done. Um, he is asking for us to give this leave to withdraw and he will file a new more specific order. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on that. Before we do that real quick, Madam Chair, I just have a, one question. Sure, Council Rivera. So there's, an, um, there's like two parts to this. It feels like, right? Like there's three handicap signs installed, and that's, that's. I mean, I'm sure he's working that out with um, the with, with Chris, but just and then it says and school parking is on the city owned lot. Um, I'm I'm trying to understand, like, is that a separate issue that we're trying to take up two at the same time? Or so I think there was a little bit of confusion about exactly what was needed, like what was in the ordinance, what was on the street, and they didn't all match up. And so what I've understood from speaking with the maker of the order is that when he and Chris looked at the actual area, they came to an understanding about what actually needed to be filed to achieve the fix, which is a little bit different than what this language said that was a little confusing. Okay. So he's gonna file it in a clearer fashion uh, to and, get and what, what, would the, the cleanup or the fix done. So would the school parking on city owned lot be addressed on that? Cause I, I mean, if it's an issue that he would like to address, that's something that we should still address, right? Or he should still try to address and- Yes, like. yes, he's he is good with um, giving this leave to withdraw and filing new language relative right. to this order. All right, thank you. So mm -hmm. motion to- um, Leave to withdraw. Leave to withdraw, item eight. Second. All in favor? Aye. Vacant, Aye. yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Rivera? Yes. Givner? Yes. Yes. Motion to take up item nine. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ordered with community support that the city post a snow parking restriction on its website at least 12 hours before towing begins. In other words, towing will not begin until the restriction has been up on the website at least 12 hours. Um, so just to update the committee, this afternoon I received an update on a string of emails that were going on between um, DPW and Jeffrey, who's the one who is trying to help post these things up timely for the public. And to summarize, what the Board of Public Works is requesting is that we would send this over to them so that they could take it up on Monday and start looking at some internal policies and communications and coordinations for how to address this. And then further, the mayor weighed in and requested that perhaps this could be handled 
by internal policies and procedures rather than by ordinance so this is just feedback that i received today and so i'm just sharing it with the committee and councillor givner you as the maker it's sort of a moving target and so i just wanted to put out there what they're requesting because i'm guessing because of the way storms are and how roads might get blocked there might be some logistical considerations they might be concerned about but anyway that's the only update i have on your order councillor givner and i'll turn it over to you thank you madam chair um i got the same emails and what i understood is that um these kind of requests probably it should have been something that i probably just requested directly to the dpw and uh, because they have the power to change this and that it's not as part of our ordinances so oh, um, okay so i'm not sure but what i understood from this is it could have been a simple request from from the council to them you know like a you know motion receive to and adopt. receive <laughs> adopt and send to dpw exactly and if they can do it they can and if they can do something else they can come back to us and say well 12 hours doesn't work but maybe nine hours does the point of this order was that people work you know beyond eight hour shifts so you know if if you find out at 2 p.m that a parking ban is going to start at 6 p.m and you're at work and your car is parked there um, there's a good chance that you're not going to be available to move your car. Um, maybe you have more than one car. You know, there's any number of situations where having a few hours notice is not enough. The second day parking ban usually isn't the problem because I feel like most residents are expecting that. Um, but as far as the first parking ban, having more notice would be helpful. And um, it sounds like that's been heard and understood and that they're going to meet about it and see what they can do on Monday. So... I would love to receive a communication back from them afterwards. I'm not sure. Um, it definitely would be my um, desire to table this and get feedback from them before making any decisions about it, just because okay. I don't really know if we need to do anything or not. And if we don't need to do anything and they have made a decision, at least we can um, know it, share it, and we can mark it as complied with at that point. Okay, so then if I'm hearing you correctly, you'd like to refer it to the Board of Public Works, but table it for an update from them after their meeting. Correct. Okay. Madam uh, Chair. Councilor Maldonado-Velez? Yeah, and can I go Thank after you. him? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just reading the ordinance um, and the email. Um, because I agree with everything that was said, not necessarily having to put in like the 12 hours or whatever number we decide um, into ordinance, but there's a sentence that says, the superintendent shall take the steps necessary to communicate with residents of the affected streets. So I think um, I would love to know like, what are what are the steps that are being taken to communicate? Because I, I think it, there should, it sh we should know as a council, like is it 12 hours, is it nine hours? Are you just using social media? Like there should be communication as to, and you know, when, what are those steps that we're taking to communicate so um, I'm agreeing with sending it to the committee and then getting um, feedback as to what their conversation is okay thank you Councilor Rivera yeah for me I um I so if it's a, if it's just a question that should have went straight to like DP to the board of, of public works that's cool and all that but like this is pilot this is like ordinance right so I just, they create ordinance or? Well, our ordinance says that they can decide. They can decide, so they, okay, do, do they create the ordinance though? I, that's the question to me. So like, whatever decision they make, they're gonna create the ordinance around it or it's not gonna be an ordinance at all around it at all. So there's so, two different things right there for me. Yes, and it is, it is to be clear, two different things. So they're saying that they have under the current ordinance the responsibility to do it right and so they're going to look at setting up policies and procedures on doing it it doesn't mean that we couldn't have an ordinance or change the ordinance if we think we need to because we I, certainly could do that because the same with the but trash that would be 
us doing it, not right. them. Because I, I was saying, like, it's no different than when the, we do the trash size and weight, right? We made the ordinance, but they, right? Well, but but it's still an ordinance that went through us. So, like, at the end of the day, yeah, there there are certain different topics where where public administration handles what they handle, and then elected officials right. handle what they handle. But there are also topics where elected officials do create law and ordinance and yes. this is this is one where if they don't want us to create the law or the ordinance on it then just that they can be i mean this if that's what it is and that's what it is right if they want to be the ones to have the internal policy and do all that stuff then that's great but like jose maldonado velez mentioned then we would like to be updated on what the process is and what the steps being taken so that way we don't have to right. come to them and file another order around this stuff and we can actually have these conversations because if that was the case counselor given her i'm sure would have not filed the order and had the conversation had she known that there was a policy and process in place already around this um but that's just my yeah. two cents with regards to this okay thank you um jeffrey you wanted to weigh in yeah just a couple of points since i was the one communicating with them um so it, it's my kind of reading of what what was said is that there's there's a possibility that they could you know in the process of them meeting on monday suggest an update to the ordinance that uh, i emailed to all of you um and uh on the, another point uh they uh carl when i spoke with him today did ask me to uh update him on anything that comes out of this discussion today so that it could inform their discussion on monday yeah yeah, so I think we're all on the same page that we're, we want to send it over to them, but then we want to hear back, and then we'll see if there's anything else we feel we should do relative to the ordinance language or if they feel they want us to consider. So I think that's all consistent. Yeah. Um, Councilor Maldonado Valiz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think this is, for me, it's happening into like a bigger conversation. Um, you know, where the ordinance says this should happen, um, but it's not laid out 100%. So how do we know what's actually gonna happen? So I guess my what I wanted to say, and I think this is a message to all city employees, because um, we've had moments where us counselors have reached out to city employees to get clarification around certain policies, around certain, you know, what's happening. And we've been, you know, replied with, with attitude, um, for lack of better words. So, you know, if we were to ask, hey, well, how what's the timing where you're notifying our residents um that we should there should be a simple enough response so i guess that's, i just wanted to make that note where you know we're all trying to figure this all out together there's ordinances that are that give um department heads and employees some leeway um but it's up to us as a concert to make sure that we can communicate to the residents when that that openness is there can we get some clarity? Um, and I think yep. this is one of the situations that we reached out and talked about 12 hours. And now that it happened with Mr. Rossi or anything, I'm talking about other situations, um, but I think this is a perfect example. You know, we're reaching out as a consul, hey, can you do the 12-hour notice? Or like, what is the notice? Um, that we could get a simple response. Um, and maybe we didn't have to go through this, putting in an order and all that stuff. So I wanted um, to make that point. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um... Is there anybody else? I'm not seeing anybody else. I think if we're good on this, then what I'm understanding is that we will refer it over to the Board of Public Works, but we will keep it tabled in committee. And then when we hear back from them, we will see what we need to do. Um, so, and Councilor Gibner, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that includes that, but also requests specific uh, timeline um, and okay. letting them know that the 12 hours is because of work schedules and not it's not um, it's not a just because request. So having a timeline that we can tell residents that they can be ass assured that they'll get noticed before a ban would be helpful as part of their feedback. So, yeah. So okay. I'd like to make a motion and, uh, to table this. Um, and request an update from DPW after their meeting Monday and also stress that um, we would really like a timeline that we can give to residents. Okay. 
All right, and uh, Jeffrey, I guess you will be our updater to the Board of Public Works um, from tonight, and we appreciate that. And so we have a motion made by Councilor Givner. Is there a second? Second. So all in favor, vacant yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Givner? Yes. And Rivera? Yes. Okay, so that recommendation then will be over to them. And I will put that on the next agenda if you want, Councilor Givner. Sorry? I'll put this tabled order on the next agenda so that you won't have to wait. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. Um, that motion. completes our agenda, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, we're not doing that. Right oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had scribbled it on mine and I didn't um, read my scribble. Oh. Motion to take um, up item 10 first. <laughs> Jumping the gun here. Um, so item 10 is to adopt and extend Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5. And um, this is the area that gives real personal property tax abatement to active duty members in the National Guard and Reserve serving in foreign countries as long as permitted under state law. So we had adopted the state law, and this was an order that was filed, I think, back in January to just extend our adoption of the state law as long as the state law is in effect. Um, Attorney Bissonnette, did I say that in a way that makes sense? Absolutely. Now, we, uh, we state law had an expiration date on it, which we had adopted the state law change and so now we will update the ordinance on this, but uh, we won't have to update it again if they further change that law. So I, I think this is, uh, that was the intent, is to get us in conformity again with state law. Okay, and so would we need to request legal form then because it is in ordinance? Um, or can we just adopt it? No, I don't, it? don't believe so. I think you can just... I think it's set out so you can just adopt the order to extend okay. it and direct the uh, city assessors to implement it. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion on this unless there's any discussion. It's pretty straightforward. Any motion that we adopt that then? Second. Second. <laughs> okay. Um, so the motion is to adopt and recommend to the assessor to implement um all in favor bacon Aye. yes maldonado velez yes jordan yes. givner yes rivera yes okay um thank you for catching that i couldn't read my own scribble here um and so now i'll entertain a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn Second. all in favor and i think this we can just say aye aye <laughs> aye, aye. aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Got a lot done tonight. Good night now. Good night. Good night.